An energy tariff is made up of two components. One is fixed charges, which you have absolutely no control over, and the other is how much energy you've used. Energy is calculated in kilowatt hours. Now, what's a kilowatt hour? So just to give you a bit of a concept, uh, if you had a two kilowatt heater plugged into a power point and ran it for an hour, that would be two kilowatt hours. So for example, five kilowatt load running for an hour, that's five kilowatt hours. What is the best energy tariff to be on in relation to solar? So in Tasmania, there's, there's kind of two main options. One is more of your traditional setup and one of them is a new time of use setup. Most people will be familiar with tariff 31, which is your normal light and power tariff, which runs your oven, fridge, power points and lights. The other tariff is tariff 41, which normally does your heating and your hot water. Now it's worth noting here that Tasmania is one of the only states in Australia that has this subsidized rate for hot water and heating because it's often so cold and so long here in winter. So if you have a solar system connected in this way, the solar generated energy will feed into your house, will be offset in your house, and anything that's left over will be fed back into the grid. Meanwhile, on tower 41, you might be buying power to run your hot water and your heating. Now that sounds a bit ridiculous, doesn't it? But when we actually look at it and break it down a little bit more, it's not as bad as it seems. So you imagine that you are exporting power back into the grid. At the same time, you're buying power through Tower 41 to run your hot water and your heating. Now you're buying it at 17 cents. So at that particular moment, that energy is costing you around about seven cents, the difference between the two tariffs. Some people will say, well, that's a bit silly. Why don't I just put all my hot water and my heating onto Tower 31? During the day, it might work okay sometimes when you've got plenty of solar energy to offset your hot water and heating. But the reality is often you haven't got enough solar generated energy to offset everything and you'll probably find that you'll end up running your hot water and your heating off the grid at the higher rate. An alternative is tariff 93 which is a new time of use tariff. Now it has some advantages but also some disadvantages. The advantage is you don't have a split tariff. Everything's all together but it's time based. So your solar system generates power during the day, feeds into your house, it's offset against everything, including your hot water and your heat pump, and whatever's left feeds back into the grid, exactly the same way. The export tariff is the same, you'll get nine and a half cents for the power you send back. Now the difference is, there is a peak and an off peak time. So between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. is peak. The same goes in the afternoon between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m., Monday to Friday, you're gonna pay a premium at 32 cents a kilowatt hour for your energy. Now, your solar system's probably gone to bed by then because it's late, and you're probably running your heat pump. So, tariff 93 is not always the best fit. And one thing to think through is, do I have electric heating? And do I use a lot of electric heating between those two peak times? And if the answer is yes, then tariff 93 is probably not the best option. But there are a few other considerations. One is, if you're on tariff 93, and you've got a normal electric hot water cylinder, we could install a timer. We can install a timer on the hot water cylinder so that it only operates during the off-peak time, say between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., which A, is during the day, so fairly likely to be offset by any solar that's being generated, and B, it's off-peak. So it means that if there wasn't enough solar energy, the hot water will only cost you 15 cents a kilowatt hour. So that's a real win. So if in doubt, uh, stick with your tariffs as they are. You can always change your tariff 93 later and it might be worth getting a, a year or two under your belt to understand how much your solar is being generated and when you're using your energy and then you could decide to change the tariff 93 later. Now if you've got a battery uh, integrated into your solar system then that changes the boundaries again. Generally with a battery it's worth going to tariff 93 because the idea is that the solar system will charge the battery off its excess power during the day and the battery will provide power to the house during the peak times. So tariff 93 can be a real win when you've got a battery system. 